how do we have a fleet of supercars as police cars? Supercars have always been about attention and publicity, and there is no finer example throughout the world than the Dubai Police Supercar Fleet. I remember when it first arrived, or the first car wearing Dubai Police livery was launched, the Lamborghini Aventador, back in 2013, the ultimate in supercar of the time, and in many ways it still is. And I remember thinking, is that car going to be used for high speed pursuits around Dubai? How's this going to work? But it was all part of publicity, promoting Dubai as an area, also the Dubai World Expo for 2020, but to be used in tourist areas. For me personally though, I couldn't wait to get back out to the UAE to go and track down some of these cars as more and more were joining the fleet. They started with the Aventador, they added a Ferrari FF, and eventually even some of the hypercars as well. Later in 2013, at the Dubai Auto Show, which was also joined with the Dubai Grand Parade, an event they were doing for the first time, they brought together hundreds of cars to go for a gigantic convoy down Sheikh Zayed Road, the main road that runs entirely through the center of Dubai from one end down to the other. Now leading the convoy would be the Dubai police cars. And I remember getting there to the main paddock area where all of the cars were assembling and walking straight over to the lineup where they had the Brabus G-Wagon 800, they had the Aventador, the FF, I think an R8, and a couple of other cars all there together as well. And thinking, how cool is this? Supercars in police livery, all set up with working lights on the roof, in some cases with all of the computer equipment and radios and things inside as well. Shattering the dream though, not so much for the high speed pursuits, but more for the tourist activities to use these cars around tourist destinations in Dubai, I guess raising the profile of the region. When they then added the Bugatti Veyron, I heard that this was coming and it was going to be during my next visit a couple of months later back out to the UAE. And I was trying my hardest to work out where I might be able to see it, where this car could be, because the idea of a Bugatti, the ultimate hypercar, being a police car, was too good not to try and find that car. So I was off doing various different things, meeting with people, going around filming videos in Dubai, lots of car spotting at the malls, Dubai Mall, Mall of the Emirates, when I heard about an event that was taking place at uh, the, I think, exhibition center outside, not to do with cars, but that was going to be where they would reel the Bugatti Veyron. Needless to say, I promptly got over there as fast as I could, hopping into a taxi who I think didn't really speak much English. It was a bit of a, a difficult arrangement to try and get to the event. When I got there, it turns out I was there within a matter of minutes before the car left. So I did manage to see the Bugatti Veyron and the other cars that were present, the Nissan GTR, the Audi R8, the G-Wagon, I think the FF as well, and even more, all decked out in the famous white and green livery that we've now come to see so many times and with many other cars as well. Obviously, the presence of these cars begs a lot of questions. How did this happen? How did it come together? How do we have a fleet of supercars as police cars? And I think this was to do with a lot of people in Dubai in general, the royal families to successful businesses, all taking part in promoting the region, increasing its uh, appeal, and of course also part of World Expo 2020. And I think in this particular instance, effectively the first cars were part of a private car collection belonging to somebody who was very senior in the police force. So you can see how this started, I guess as a bit of a publicity stunt to use the cars for attention. It just became so big and it was reported around the entire world. I think all mainstream news picked this idea up because it's something you normally only see in a movie or, or in your imagination. Yet Dubai had gone, like in so many things that they do, and created this fantasy in, in reality. So that's where the cars appeared and a few more cars then started coming in, I guess from perhaps other close friends or, or staff or people connected to that part of the police force. And we had this ever expanding lineup that went on to feature also the Porsche 918 Spyder, the Aston Martin 177, and so many cars, and some of which are still part of the police force to today. One car from my earlier days of chasing supercars around the world to film videos that always stood out was the Aston Martin 177. Being British, but also simply how elegant the car is, how rare it is, only 77 in the world, and how infrequently you could ever hope to even find one, then lo and behold, one became a Dubai police supercar. 
This was a car that had obviously been finished in the white and green livery, but also notably inside, against the red leather of its dashboard, also wore the Dubai police computer and was often seen with the blue lights on going to different events. And again, one of 77, and I think it was even one of the Q-series cars, of which they only made seven, so finished with extra carbon fibre parts on the front splitter and the door mirrors. So a Q-series 177 as a Dubai police car. Like when private owners wrap their cars, of course it's hard to tell whether we're looking at the same car or whether we're looking at another event door perhaps that's become a Dubai police cars. And maybe this is where we need to track the VINs to see which cars actually serve time operating as police cars, because that's quite a rare thing to be able to say, that that car was a police car, but it's a Lamborghini. Like I was saying about the cars being used at different events, I remember at the motor show, the auto show itself, which they held every second year, they had through the main atriums of the exhibition centre the cars, or some of the cars, the Brabus G-Wagon and the Aventador for sure, I think the Bentley Continental may be there as well. And they had the cars, you know, roped off, not necessarily the best positions to see them, and being the avid car spotter that I was, that wasn't good enough, because taking a photo of a car when it's behind ropes, you get to see the car, but it's not necessarily the, the best image of it. So I actually stayed very late on the last day when the show was finished, in the public area, before they would eventually take the cars out. So the beauty of that was they actually turned on the blues and twos, had the lights going, driving the cars out of the exhibition centre, and there was I, kind of running after them with excitement, thinking, how cool is this? That's a Brabus G-Wagon with its light on, then the Lamborghini Aventador departing, and I guess a reward for the patience of staying there until late, until the cars would drive out. One thing you notice is that the cars seem to come and go. Sometimes you see them, maybe only for a short period, but given the way the internet and social media works, they keep popping back up in pictures, so it's hard to tell what's actually still part of the fleet itself. And I think this is in part down to, you know, friends lending their cars for the purpose, cars that were used initially for short-term publicity, and then moved on or moved back to wherever their original home was. But it means that you constantly see these images, and I think we will for many years to come, of all of these cars representing their purposes for the police. And obviously they go to many different events. I don't think they're frequently used for the traditional police purposes. But that's not the point. That's not why they were introduced. It's this fascination with the imagination, which fits so much with what you see when you experience going to Dubai. And what more could they do than, than this? We occasionally see, I guess, other police forces with cars around the world. In the UK, very briefly, I think McLaren Birmingham lent a McLaren MP412C to their local police force in Italy. Famously, the Italian police drive around with Lamborghini models, always having, I think, a hurricane or two on their fleet in the blue and white. And again, around the world, often for very short-term publicity pieces. But Dubai did it in a much bigger way than everyone else. Carly gets more out of your car. Unlock hidden functions. Personalize your car with the coding function. Scan, individualize, code. It's easy with the Carly app and adapter. Diagnostics, maintenance, coding, and used car checks. Carly. More than 1 million satisfied customers worldwide.